And we begin this four to five with breaking news out of the Middle East. After 11 days of violence that has claimed hundreds of lives, Israel and Gaza have declared a ceasefire. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said his security cabinet unilaterally approved an Egyptian meditated proposal. It said the sides were still determining exactly when it will take effect. There was no immediate comment from Hamas. We'll stay on top of the developments and bring you the latest both on air as well as online. All right, good afternoon. Welcome to your four to five. I'm Eric Chilton here with Lauren Coleman and Jalen Gilkey. Hey. And make sure, happy Thursday everybody, and make sure to join us on our Facebook live stream where we chat with you all and have a whole bunch of fun during the break. Yep, and one of the things we're talking about is our state's latest efforts to get more people vaccinated. So, uh, one of those latest uh, updates is uh, one of the triad's largest attractions is getting in on the vaccinations. This weekend, the North Carolina Zoo is doubling as COVID-19 vaccination site. WFNY News 2's Jalen Gilkey went out to Asheboro to find out more. And that's right, Lauren, the North Carolina Zoo is the largest natural habitat zoo in the world. So what better way to use all that space than by giving away free COVID-19 vaccinations to the public? You do not have to have an appointment. Um, it's a, it's a walk-up clinic, so it's easy and convenient for everyone. According to the zoo's public relations officer, Debbie Fuchs, there's a little bonus if you come on out and get vaccinated. There is an incentive to get your vaccine here if you're not already vaccinated. Um, on, upon completion of your vaccine, you get a return ticket to come back to the zoo one day for free. Larry Kessler was just one of the many that came out to get their vaccine today at the North Carolina Zoo, and it wasn't because of the free trip to the zoo either. I think it's a great thing uh, for the community. Uh, I've tried for the last couple of weeks to reach somebody on the telephone at, uh, with no luck. A friend of mine texted me this morning, said they were doing this, and so I, I come over here to get my shot. Although this was not the first time the zoo has hosted a vaccine clinic, it is the first time you didn't need to make an appointment to come out. And if you didn't make it out today, no worries. You can head out either tomorrow or Friday, uh, fr Friday or Saturday, excuse me, between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. And if this weekend doesn't work, they will be hosting another walk-in clinic July, June 10th, 11th, and 12th. If you'd like more information, I'll attach a link to their web story on WFMYNews2.com. That's cool. I mean, you know, our motto is if, if, if it's free, it's for me. Yeah. So I think you should go do that and take advantage of that. You don't get that very often. Yeah, I love that people are just getting so creative to find ways to get more people vaccinated. And I think the more that these incentives come out, the more people will get vaccinated. And exactly. I love the way that they've paired a uh, free opportunity and walk-in clinics now with the uh, incentive of getting the free admission to the zoo as well. It's just a great uh, environment to know. Even if you're just visiting the zoo today, didn't have a plan on getting the vaccine, you know, just it being on the forefront of your mind and just possibly seeing that you had an opportunity today could sway some people to getting it. Decent crowds out there to do yeah, it? Yeah, decent crowds. They were, uh, it was a lot of people out there today, good. and there was a good amount of people that I saw out there getting their vaccine today. And they said Saturday they, they are expecting a pretty full house, so it should be some more people that are uh, able to get their shot. Well, yeah. Saturday's always a big day. So, always yeah. a big day. And it's nice just to see more of these vaccination sites popping up all over the area. Absolutely. I just, uh, I'm just super thankful that the uh, zoo let us come on out and let them know, and let it, so we can let you all know that there is another option out there for for everyone to get vaccinated. Very good. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jalen. Uh, we have a bit of a milestone in our coronavirus state numbers. This graphic shows the percentage of tests coming back positive. Today's number is 3.3%. That is the lowest number the state has ever reported, and we've been tracking this metric since April 1st of last year, and no other day was equal to or lower than today. We've come close a couple of times, but this, this is a record. Our state has made big strides elsewhere. We'll break it all down for you today at 5. And the lockdown and quarantines over the past year definitely put a dent on any travel plans. But now that many of us are heading back to airports, there are new concerns about the airline rewards program. Let's connect the dots for you. You can thank the COVID pandemic for a whole lot of unused airline miles, but experts warn you may want to use them sooner than later. Let's connect the dots. Value Penguin crunched the numbers and found a massive amount of airline reward miles went unused in 2020. That's not a big surprise. With restrictions in place and COVID concerns, not a lot of people were traveling last year. 
It found that the five major airline loyalty programs ended the year with a combined $27.5 billion in unused miles. So here's the problem. The airlines had a really rough 2020. Forbes estimates the six largest airlines lost $35 billion. All those outstanding miles are considered liabilities, which means they count as a loss when you're balancing the books. Now that people are starting to travel again, many will be using those stockpiled miles that do little to help the struggling airlines. Travel experts predict the airlines will start changing rules to help their bottom line. That could mean reducing the value of rewards or reinstating expiration dates on the miles already earned. That means the experts recommend using those rewards as soon as possible or run the risk of getting grounded. All right, let's get to your four to five roundup. Unemployment numbers dropped again last week. 444,000 Americans applied for benefits as a sign that the job market is strengthening as COVID infections drop and restrictions ease. The jobs report coincides with moves by nearly all the nation's Republican governors to cut off a $300 a week unemployment benefit that many blame for discouraging people from getting a job. And the European Union finalized a deal with Pfizer to get 2 billion doses of the COVID-19 shot. 900 million of the doses will be the current vaccine and 900 million will be a serum adapted to the virus variant. The deal also stipulates that the production of the doses must be based in the EU and essential components need to be sourced from the region. Meanwhile, millions of doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccines, they are in jeopardy. The head of Emergent, a J&J manufacturer, says more than 100 million doses are on hold and possibly contaminated. Emergent CEO says the FDA found multiple safety violations at its Baltimore plant, including cross-contamination. As the plant also makes ingredients for AstraZeneca's vaccine, the federal health officials are investigating and will decide which doses, if any, are safe for use. And the House approved legislation to establish a bipartisan commission to investigate the January 6th attack on the Capitol. But the bill faces an uphill battle in the Senate. It is unclear if it will get enough support from Republicans. If approved, the panel would be even divided between appointed Democrats and Republicans. A stretch of hot days as we see some upper 80s in our forecast. In fact, it will not be out of the question to say we'll see a 90 here or there over the next seven days. Not so much today, but once we get into tomorrow and all the days after that, we are pushing 90 degrees. Look at these readings today, 82. This is what we see right now in Greensboro, 83 Winston-Salem. High point, you're at 85 Burlington, same reading. You get the idea. We're all kind of on the same page here. Low 80s there for Lexington at 83. And then if you look east heading toward uh, the triangle, you're pushing upper 80s already for that area. Tonight's overnight low, pretty comfortable clear skies 58. We'll see that high of uh, 84 degrees tomorrow. Now, mostly sunny skies to partly cloudy. That's kind of it for a week. We do have a chance of a shower or two toward the beginning of the week, but really most of that is not because of a frontal system. It's just those pop up late day showers or thunderstorms just because we're that warm. When you get into those 80s, we could see a late day pop up shower at any time. Really satellite and radar pretty clear right now. We've to a wider shot. Same story. Not a whole lot to see. All that is because of this high pressure that sort of backs up over the Carolinas and just parks itself there. That big bubble of high pressure holds back any of the rain around the periphery of that bubble and we just kind of cook underneath that thing, don't we? Let's look at our seven day forecast and boy, we're nothing if not consistent, right? Mid 80s tomorrow and then it's upper 80s for the entire rest of the seven day forecast going with uh, temperatures around 88 on Saturday, 89 Sunday and Monday. We'll throw in that 20% chance of a late day pop up shower or storm, but it's not great, but that's Monday and Tuesday as Tuesday drops to 87. We build right back in again Wednesday and Thursday, sunny to partly cloudy 88 and 89. Hot mics, hot mics. Facebook friends. Hello. There's the. Hello, Facebook. So back at C for me. Okay, thank you. No, that's fine. 
Let's see what's happening in the Facebook room. Y'all, I'm a little uh, a little sleepy today. A little sleepy. Joanne today. says my yard needs a shower. Ooh, that is true. Yep. It's getting oh, the heat here this we week. go. Jay Eames with another joke. Why did the farmer start a punk rock band? Because he was tired of hauling oats. Haul and oats. Okay. Mm, I'm going to let you know, Jay Eames, I did not get that one. <laughs> the group Haul and Oats? Oh, that, okay. Yeah, okay. There they, we go. But he spelled Hallin, right? H A U L. Absolutely. Hallen. There it is. Excuse there me. It is. Brenda says hello to Jalen. Well, hello, Miss Brenda. How are you today? How's everyone in our Facebook Live? Are we doing all right? Having a good Thursday afternoon? Any more AKA love connections? We need to hear. Thursday, June, uh, Friday, Junior. <sighs> Vicky says hi. Hi, Vicky. How's everybody's day going so far? Not bad. Plugging along. I'm hanging in there. I'm okay. You're at B. Okay, I'll be right here. 30 out. That means I need to go stand in my place. I'm feeling sleepy. Yeah, buddy, it's a contagious today. I'm telling you. It has been like this all week, man. Mm -hmm. I do concur. Well, you know the saying, April showers bring May flowers, and one woman is changing that up. Since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, she's using gardening to make a difference. So you might say being in tune with mental health is helping flowers bloom. It's amazing the, the value of nature and how it makes people feel. Sally Cobb has been an avid gardener for most of her life, and for the past 20 years, she's been able to share the gift of gardening with others through horticultural therapy. So horticultural therapist uses nature to achieve a certain goal. And in this setting, the hospice setting, our goal is improved quality of life. God maintains several of the gardens at a Thor Care Collective in Greensboro. She uses plants and gardening to improve the mental and physical health of patients who are nearing the end of life. Um, it has compartments in it. Her favorite activity is the sensory basket. We have things with different textures and smells and some drama. So it helps distract the patient from their illness and brings back memories of their gardens if they had gardens when they were younger. She says this therapy helps patients gain a sense of control. My goal is not to do something for the patient, not to bring in a vase of flowers, but to take in a bucket of flowers and say, I've brought some flowers today. Would you like to make a vase for yourself? And so then they begin to become involved and for a short time, they become distracted from their illness. Volunteers like Carl Wilson find comfort in the gardens too. I find it therapeutic. Uh, it helps me bring some closure to my mother's death. And uh, it, it's just, I just love being outside. It's not work to us. It's, um, we are driven by our mission statement to support mind, body, and spirit here at AuthoraCare. Thora Care Collective also provides services for children. They get to work in the garden as a way to cope with grief or loss. And if you want to get involved, Kyle says they're always looking for volunteers. So we'll have that information up on our website. That's a great thing they do. So if anybody of you watching at home, I mean, I've experienced this where we had to use hospice for mm -hmm. a family member, or maybe if it's even a friend. The work they do is incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to me, they do a lot for the patient, but really the caregivers as well, because it's stressful on a family when they go through that type of thing. You don't know what to expect. Most people have never been through it. And so anything that they do to help hospice to me is a big thumbs up. Absolutely right. I love that we use horticulture as a, well, they're using horticulture as a form of therapy for, like you said, not only the patient, but the caregiver and their family as well. It's just a good outlet to relieve some stress and to just kind of be outside and enjoy nature. Well, if you get 
even if it's 15 minutes and you're not thinking about mm -hmm. that black cloud that's hanging over your head if you're going through that, um, that's so valuable to them. Even if you're not a gardener, just the sense yes. that plants and flowers, what they can do for you, like say if it's your anniversary and you get flowers or you're getting presented an award and you get flowers, you just instantly get happy. So, you know, just brings happiness to everybody around. It's true, they're going, doing good things for people. That's, we need more stories like that, don't yeah. we? We have those in the four to five, so stick around, we're coming back with more. Make and sure. we'll chat with you on Facebook. Yeah, I'd love to say, come join us on Facebook. Facebook. Let's have some fun, let's have some fun, crack some jokes. Lovely. In the 80s, New Orleans. I'm going to walk through the back. Our director, Brad, said hello to Jalen. He didn't answer. He's really upset. Yeah, Brad, because I can actually, you can hear me right now. Hello, <laughs> hello, Brad. I'm sorry I didn't reply to you. I was too busy uh, talking to my real Facebook friends in the live stream. I don't think our producer, Callie, that just walked by knew that she was being broadcast on Facebook. Probably not. <laughs> All right, out in the weather garden. It is hot. Oh, let me check the fountain. Here. You want to Let's take the Jeff shot. Wait. There we go. I want to see what he was talking about. He said that a frog had gotten in here and clogged up the... Oh, he must have... He cleaned it out. Yeah, it was. But he, I think he got it out. Come on, Brad. Poor Jeff. How many times are we going to show? <laughs> there we go, Brad. That's much better. We need to edit together a compilation of Jeff's appearances on the Fortify. It'll be a nice little social media clip. I like your shirt, Leslie. Are those all flowers or like faces or emojis? Flowers. Flowers. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Uh, end of week, Jeff Roundup. And you know which one you can use it to replace. <laughs> Where in the world is Jeff Scordish? It's a great question. Only a few I have that answer. Right now, he is in downtown Greensboro taking pictures for our four to five open. You know, the still images that we have for the... In the 80s, nearly every Thursday night, families gathered around the television to watch The Cosby Show. And today on U Day, Coach Lamont shares how watching the program was more than just entertainment, but a picture of what his life could be. I remember when I was in high school, I would always say I wanted five kids, four girls, one boy. I wanted to be like the Huxtables. See, it was something because this was the only black family I had ever seen. All I knew was broken relationships and divorce. It was painful to witness, but I had never seen the responsibilities of fatherhood or even how to be a husband. Well, I became that father to five, and my wife Stacia and I both had to learn how to extend ourselves to help develop the lives of these souls God trusted us with. Did I make mistakes? Yes. Did I miss the mark? Yes. Did I disappoint? Oh yeah. Did I learn? That is the question we should ask ourselves. Did I learn? Well, in this situation, the answer is I am still learning. I am learning how to be selfless and love unconditionally. So we have the numbers now in from the National Hurricane Center to talk about uh, what they expect this season will look like. You know, in recent years, the numbers have been a little bit elevated, but um, I was talking with Tim Buckley about this a little earlier. It is not an El Nino or La Nina year, so we're right in the middle, but the numbers are still a little bit on the high side. You can see the averages here, um, usually around seven storms, and they're or hurricanes rather, and they're causing for six to 10, so a little bit elevated there. And uh, by the way, we had 14 in 2020, and then the
your hurricanes um, three to five and the average is three so that would be anything of a category three or greater um, watch this you know we'll watch this this year obviously it is that time when we start to see that activity it usually even though June 1st is technically the day it can happen at any time and we'll be watching this closely interesting that they are elevating the numbers a little bit from uh, what we've seen in the past and by the way just named storms alone they're calling for between 13 and 20 the average is 14 so we will watch and wait won't we uh, 80s for the most part low to mid across central North Carolina right across the Piedmont really you uh, jump back up into the higher elevations Galax has a reading of 76 that is really comfortable and Boone at 74 but everybody else on the warm side 58 that'll be the low tonight mostly clear uh, lots of sunshine for your Friday boy is it a great weekend if you have outdoor plans you need to make them for for Saturday Sunday you're lucky if you have something planned because this is nearly perfect weather for this time of the year. Clear all the way around. It is a huge ridge of high pressure and that stays in control for several days. And that's why, and by the way, normally if we had temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, we'd have a chance of a late day pop up thunderstorm every day. But because that high pressure is centrally located over us, it kind of squelches out that activity. So we don't have that through the weekend. It's a beautiful weekend. Slight chance Monday, Tuesday, then again, Wednesday, Thursday, rain chances out. We stay warm as we see those high temperatures in the upper 80s. Hot mics, hot mics. And then four, okay. What are they talking about here? Uh, Rue Green says, hey Eric, are the other meteorologists grilling out again with Chad and leaving you to work? <laughs> no, no. Hey, Claire, it's Jalen. Just letting you know that spot is in for you. All right, so, oh, there's a sneaky shot hey, of Jalen. Hey, y'all want to know a secret? I was the one that founded the guys grill game the, for the guys that were out grilling yesterday. When I worked night side, I was the lead chef or uh, really? grill, grill master. Yeah. What was your best dish? Yeah. I mean, we were grilling, so it's just grilling and chilling. You just put whatever on there and let it, let it do what it does. What's your specialty? On the grill? Yeah. I make anything. It don't matter. Is it ribs? Is it sausage links? I would say probably either, chicken. either ribs or chicken. Okay. Yeah. We had steaks last night. Mm. But we did a steak salad, but we grilled it out. And that's really the first time we've done a steak since, you know, before, like in warmer weather last year. It's been a while. Steak salad. That sounds delicious. Did Love it have it. grapes in it? No, we did like cherry tomatoes and onions and okay. lettuce and blue cheese dressing. Gorgonzola? A little gorgonzola? Ooh, no, but that's that's a good idea. Yeah, last year we had a big old grill session, grilled burgers, hot dogs. I love that. It was fun, 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 fun. I oh, love grilling. Yeah, out. I remember you and Maddie talking about that when we did the hot dog volcano story. Yep, mm. it was a good time. Brad, you have a question. What what is your question, Bradley? Brad is talking about the chat. Oh, okay. Never mind then. So if you're a fan of farm fresh produce, and who isn't, then this one is for you, or I should say all of us. Now, you probably already know that Lowe's Foods, based in the Triad in Winston-Salem, they pride themselves on being local. Well, their new Carolina Crate program is a must-do if you want the freshest ingredients. This is really cool. I spoke with their president, Tom Lowe, about this unique opportunity. Tim, I really appreciate your time. I know you are a busy man. Hey, this really sounds like uh, a cool program. Explain how it works and what is it all about? Yeah, great. Uh, thanks for having us today. Um, love talking about our um, overall uh, Carolina Crate program here at uh, Lowe's Foods. 
What this really is, is about us taking the opportunity to really support local. When we talk about local agriculture, I mean, nothing says North Carolina more than that. Uh, we've had the unique opportunity to be able to work with over 200 farmers over the last few years. And it's just a way that we get an opportunity to be able to take um, some product that's fresh grown right here in the Carolinas and bring it back to the local community for quick access uh, right here. Just drive up and we load it in your car at Lowe's Boots. You know, I know you guys, since you're triad based, obviously you're close in the hearts of a lot of us. Uh, and But you really do believe in keeping it local and taking care of your own. I mean, that's part of Lowe's Foods mantra really, isn't it? You know, we are a homegrown based company born right here in the Carolinas back in 1954. And we've been the Carolinas based company uh, through our entirety of our, uh, of our organization's career. And, and you know, for us, it is about the community. Um, and, and anytime we have the chance and the opportunity to be able to go through and support a uh, local, uh, that's what we're all about. In fact, when you stop in our stores, what you'll find is you'll find literally thousands of local items where we've helped uh, folks be able to source the product and be able to sell it into the, not just Lowe's, but into the supermarket chain industry so that they have the opportunity to be able to sell their goods so we can connect that local entrepreneurial that's going out there and raising the product right here fresh uh, in the Carolinas and get it to the source of the consumer where they can consume it and feel great about making that handshake and that connection to be able to support uh, the local farmers out there. It's so important that we all do that. This is a great program. Thanks for your time today, Tim. Uh, we will see you in the grocery store. So I asked you on my Facebook page, tell me the best dish that you make that uses fresh produce. Take a look at all this. Phyllis said blistered cherry tomatoes roasted in an oven with balsamic glaze drizzled over them. Man, James says surf and turf with garden salad and baked potato. Can't go wrong with that. Um, James Anderson says yellow and zucchini squash grilled with onions or used in a casserole. Uh, Janice said caprese salad with balsamic glaze using fresh tomatoes and basil. <laughs> People are Fancy up in here. Teresa said collard, soul food style, which means pork, but they're good with turkey as well. Tried a different way last time in the pan with veggie stock, onions, and seasoning. And Louisa said zucchini chips with Parmesan cheese roasted in the oven. Yummy. We've actually done that as well. Getting back to what Lowe's is doing and what is really cool about this is you uh, you drive up in like the Lowe's to go line. You know how like all the major grocery store chains have the they come out and deliver your groceries right, if right, you want right. to. So the fee for this there's a the full season which I think is three hundred dollars, but that's a, a crate of that food and meats uh, every Saturday from June I can't remember the dates so we have to check the story but all the way through most of August and you do it every Saturday. Then you can do half of that, $150. But either way, you get that every Saturday and you get a subscription to that Lowe's to go line. So anytime you want groceries, yeah. you can order them online. They'll bring them out to your car. I love that because, you know, if you're looking to live a healthier lifestyle, have that balanced meal, you're guaranteed to get the ingredients that you need. You just pick it up and use it when you make your dishes at home. Very cool. Absolutely. I'm a super fan of anything veggie and fruit related, mm -hmm. but I think the comments was the best part of this. Yes. I mean, some of these dishes and some, I mean. I'm hungry now. Those are some great suggestions. Caprese salad, where we had blistered cherry blistered tomatoes cherry, with know. balsamic vinegar so drizzle. Lovely. It was just a lot going on, made me hungry. Also, something to remember, they're supporting all local. So every bit of this produce is coming from somewhere in our oh. state. Wow, oh, that's so, even yeah, cool. All of it is local and it stays here. So that's cool, amazing. good stuff. You, you guys like to cook with fresh produce? Love it. Absolutely, nothing beats a fresh, like leafy green salad. Yeah, just makes you feel good about yourself. It does, make you, make you feel responsible. Yeah. That you're doing something healthy for <laughs> yeah. a change, yes. Once in a while. Very Even good. if I didn't run today, I had a salad, it's fine. I had a salad. Right. I might not have moved. I might have had five hot dogs before that, <laughs> but I had a salad. You know, I ate, you know, three salads on sitting on my couch. It's fine. Okay. That's, yeah. that's all right. That's a step in the right direction, or no steps. All right, we're coming right back. Stay there. <laughs> I like that, Eric. No steps. No steps. No steps. <laughs> just some salad. Yeah. Facebook, let's go. Now I'm hungry. We're looking for you. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together like a classic combination with a dark delicious cookie. Meets an icy cold sensation. You know. 
Check, check. One, two. Is that me or Lauren? Check. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's no shave November. How much time in the break, Matt? All right, guys. Sorry, I had. I need a water break. Hey, Matt, am I outside for Tanya's part in the weather Tonight. garden? Yeah, yeah, okay, just checking. In GMS, they used to want to take the seven day full and then want me to hustle inside. <laughs> You'd hear wow. the door open and the wind blowing. Is it Ralph Havis? Where? Or Davis. Ooh, I do not know. For beef burger, is that supposed to say Davis or Havis? It's Havis. It's Havis. It's Havis. It's Havis. H. Okay. okay. Definitely an H. Okay. I'm rejuvenated, Facebook. A little H2O, good for you. That's what the water boy told me. I do not drink enough water. That is something I have to change. Got to get some high quality H2O. H2O, high quality. Hi there and good afternoon. Welcome to the Four to Five. I'm Eric Chilton alongside Lauren Cole and Jalen Gilkey. Happy Friday, Junior, everyone. And if you don't <laughs> know, guess what? We're live streaming on Facebook. So come and join us and chat with us during the break. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun on there, but we have a lot to talk about today. So let's just jump right into your Four to Five roundup. Greensboro City Manager presented a $617 million budget for the 2021 to 2022 fiscal year. It restores nearly $5 million in operating funds that were cut during the pandemic. The proposal also includes a measure to hire eight new police officers and a slight increase in city water rates, up 4.5% more than the average customer a month. The money would go up towards upkeep to treatment plants and pipelines. Governor Roy Cooper also shared his budget recommendations for the state this week and how North Carolina can invest in recovery through the American Rescue Plan. We will get nearly $6 billion in federal funds to invest in the state and recovery after the pandemic. Governor Cooper wants to use it for public education, to bridge the digital divide, for grants for middle income families and infrastructure and to reconnect the workforce. You can see the full proposal on our website. And the Triad lost another long-standing restaurant, Beef Burger, is permanently closed. The restaurant on Gate City Boulevard served customers for more than 60 years. Longtime owner Ralph Havis is reportedly in poor health and in the hospital. He bought the franchise in 1971 and owned the last remaining Beef Burger. Supporters and protesters of the Confederate statue in Graham are expected to gather tonight. Graham police tell us they are aware and gave both groups standards of protesting. Documents, a Facebook event called NC Confederate Day, indicates dozens of people will gather in Graham Court Square in just a few hours. That page says the event is to celebrate the 160th anniversary of our state seceding from the Union and joining the Confederacy. A counter protest group called No to White Supremacy in Graham. Formed because of this, you can stick a magnet to the site on your COVID shot. A new viral post is going around claiming the COVID-19 vaccine shot contained magnetic metal. But before you believe it, take a look at what your verified team found out. More than 35% of the U.S. population is now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. But many Americans are still skeptical, citing health concerns and uncertainty over how the vaccine may affect them. One of those concerns is this. It's called the COVID Magnet Challenge, and it went viral online. The challenge claims to show magnets sticking to the arms of individuals who were vaccinated at the site of their vaccination. So let's verify. 
Does the COVID-19 vaccine contain a chip or any particles that could cause a magnetic reaction? Our sources, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and Dr. Robert Bradell, founding chair of the Department of Dermatology and professor in the Department of Pathology at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. We can trace the claim to this, a now-deleted video post to Twitter on May 8th. The video showed a woman sticking a magnet to her arm where she said she was injected with the Pfizer vaccine. The video had more than 60,000 views before it was taken down, but the video was also posted to World Star Hip Hop, where it had more than 500,000 views. Dr. Burdell says it's impossible for a vaccine to contain enough magnetic properties to allow a magnet to stick to skin, saying, quote, you couldn't see it. If you hold up a vaccine you see through a vial, there just can't be particles of metal big enough to make that happen. Dr. Burdell added, if there were enough particles in the vaccine, the skin would visibly raise if a magnet were held close to it. And take a look at this. The FDA issued a fact sheet about the COVID-19 vaccine, and it included a list of ingredients in the Pfizer doses. Metal particles were aren't listed. And the CDC doesn't list magnetism as a possible side effect of the Pfizer vaccine or any other COVID-19 vaccine. So we can verify. No, the COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain any particles that could cause a magnetic reaction. All right, let's uh, look at the numbers and talk about the temperatures. It is hot. I can tell you firsthand. I will say this, though. Humidity levels aren't feeling like it does in like a July and August right now. So even though we're seeing some low to mid 80s across the area, not quite as bad as what we'll see in the middle or towards late summer with July usually being our hottest month anyway, July and August that time period. Definitely the hottest. We're at 82 degrees at the airport in Greensboro, where our official records are kept. Uh, 85 for High Point, 85 also in Burlington, Winston-Salem at 83. If you head north, you're looking at some mid 80s too for Reedsville and Mount Airy. Yes, it is definitely on the warm side for us. Tonight, that low of 58, that's pretty comfortable. And really, as we get into the next uh, several days and beginning of next week, our overnight lows will be more in the 60s. As we see the approach of maybe a 90 degree day, probably in the southern Piedmont, not out of the question for us to see a 90 degree high temperature uh, through the weekend and the first part of next week. We'll show you that in a minute. Tomorrow, 84 for your Friday. That's a good way to end the week there with mostly sunny skies. The weekend looks great too. Hardly see much in the way of cloud cover. Big ridge of high pressure. And when we're under that bubble of high pressure, nothing really can get through that. Notice how the rain kind of hangs on the edge of the influence really of that high. So that high will be rotating clockwise, but when it's right over the top of us, winds are going to be fairly uh, calm and we just sort of bake underneath that high pressure dome. And we'll stay that way for a while. Look for these lows, as we mentioned, in the upper 50s for tonight. Seven day forecast showing lots of 80s, mid 80s tomorrow. Upper 80s every day after that. Saturday, Sunday, it's an 88 to 89 degree high temperature range. Monday, Tuesday, a slight 20% chance of a shower. And then Wednesday, Thursday, still 88 to 89 and partly cloudy skies. All right, so there's a dry January. That's right up there at the beginning of the year. And then later in the year, you have no shave November. And then, oh, what is that? That right there, friends, is the new thing. It's called No Mo May. <laughs> what do you think no about that, May. Air Chilton? Well, since my twins do the yard, doesn't bother me a bit. But <laughs> in the future, when they go to college, <laughs> yes, that would be great. Mm -hmm. And you, Lauren? Uh, I've mowed the lawn once in my life <laughs> when I was in seventh grade. Okay. I told my dad I want an allowance. He said, go mow the lawn. Oh, how what is it? I, I didn't do it again. And that's okay. the last time. <laughs> All right, so No Mo May started in 2019, and it's kind of new, but it centers around letting nature have more time to breathe without yard chemicals and all that mowing. All right, hey, according to GardensIllustrated.com, mowing less cuts down on your pollen count because you're not stirring up all the weeds and all the things. Also, not mowing can increase the amount of nectar that is available to bees and other pollinators. So that's good for the whole like food cycle thing. Consumer Reports says now uh, mowing every four weeks instead of two is best. Keep the grass a little taller, about three to four inches. Keep the blades on your mower sharp and use the mulching mode because they say that's gonna cut grass into fine clippings and then you can deposit them into the soil. They say the grass clippings actually contain many of the same nutrients found in chemical-based fertilizers. Now, when it comes to watering, 
It may seem counterintuitive, but cut back on watering your lawn, because watering less will encourage the grass to grow deeper roots and develop resistance to drought. And because watering at night can actually promote fungus, water only during the early morning hours. And while it may get a bad rap, clover is especially good for your lawn. It adds nitrogen and keeps other lawn weeds at bay. All right, so hey, uh, coming up tonight at Two Wants to Know at 530, we're talking rent, we're talking mortgage, we're talking utility assistance. This is all through the programs in Greensboro, Guilford County, Winston-Salem, and Forsyth County. There is still money available, and you can text your questions about how to apply and how does this work to 336-379-5775. We take your questions starting at 530. Amen. Um, she studied the same thing I did. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> just don't try. Yeah. <laughs> and I know she's been like looking for other work too. I'll talk. No, I'll talk. No, I'm talking to Leslie. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking to you. Well, what's up, Jay? <laughs> None, you know. I'm just hanging. Well, we got 20. Look, you're sitting in the corner like you've been a bad guy. Just. I'm usually you. in the corner. I'm used to being in the penalty <laughs> there box. He is. There he is. Time out. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like one of your kids. That's what you, yep. You could be. I know. We know. We've talked about that. How many Jayla's all -stars parents. are there? Facebook, Eric is the same exact age as my parents. Yep. Are your mom and dad both the same age exactly? W one month after the next. Wow. Yep. August to September. August what? 18th and then September 24th. And my grandma's birthday is September 26. Ooh, you got them all in the same. When's yours? July 9th. Coming oh, up. Oh, you're f a few days after my sister's birthday. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it so is I'll coming up. I'll definitely remember yours. All righty, all righty. It is great. Cancer season. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost that time. It is almost that time. It's time to make some of those dishes those people were talking yes. about. Yes. Yeah, I'm really just dreaming about those blistered. That Roma first tomatoes. one was my favorite, the um, balsamic and the roasted veggies. Yes. That one, that was. My wife makes, and when she first told me this, I was like, nope, not eating it. But then I did, and it's awesome. But kale chips, and she'll yes. bake. That is so good, and I would have never said that I wanted to eat that. Yeah. It is so good. Just put a little bit of cheese on it. Yep, some salt, sea salt. I love kale chips. I've tried to make them. And That's what she does. She makes it's them. It's like 50-50. Half time I'm successful, the other <laughs> half I've burned it. Chad Silver dries his own fruit. So our friends at Guilford County School System, they're always looking for new ways to celebrate their teachers and staff. One way they do this, they ask all their employees to submit the name of someone at their school, that particular school that goes above and beyond. They call them GCS All-Stars. Well, in my opinion, this next guy you're about to meet is one of those. He's a music teacher, and Jerry Davis decided to create a music video celebrating the All-Stars. Here's part of my chat with him. Take a look. Jerry, very cool thing that you did here, just kind of spotlight folks and what they're doing going above and beyond. Tell me about how you came up with the idea. Um, so the idea came about from um, Wanda Edwards uh, from the district office. She um, had a really great idea of creating a storyline of appreciation for all the Gopher County employees, whether they're administrators, whether they are teachers, custodial staff, maintenance members. Um, and so the idea was um, a team-based uh, video. So talk about the process, because that's not an, an easy uh, process. You can't do this quickly, putting together a big video. How did you do it? There were some nights where I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning just thinking about an idea or, or a type of 
a video shot and I would write it down. Um, the actual execution of like videoing all the schools, uh, my, my principal allowed me to take two days off to travel to I think about nine or 10 different schools. So it was released today at noon. What's your takeaway? What do you want people to take away from this video? I, I want everybody to feel like they were part of the GCS team, the, the all-star team. So I really wanted to, even from the opening scene, I wanted to set it up as, you know, somebody um, who is a student here and they have to rely back on the skills that they learn from all the all-stars. Mm -hmm. um, even like nutrition specialists, um, they, they, they provide food, um, even um, maintenance, they provide lighting, um, keep students excited, um, and teachers, coaches, um, administration. Um, I want everybody to feel like they are part of the GCS All-Star team. It's a great thing you've done, Jerry. Thank you for doing this, highlighting the best of the best out there. Our kids need this. So Jerry's so cool, not only did he write the music, he wrote the song, he performed it, he shot all the video, he edited it all, um, but as we were talking today, he said, I gotta be quick about this interview. I said, okay, yeah, we can get you out. And, and he said, because he's a reservist, he's an army reservist, oh, wow. and he has to go on a mission at like 30 minutes after we finish the interview. So he does it all. Wow, he does it all. Very, very talented. And what a great gift for them to have this music video featuring the teachers, the students, and it's something they'll always be able to look at and have forever. I love the way they're just uh, finding more creative ways to highlight and to show gratitude to our teachers who on a daily basis just do not get enough recognition. Mm -hmm. So just to be, like I said, come up with something creative, something fun, something light to just uh, give that gratitude and make sure we are appreciative for what the teachers are doing for our kids. And they released that at noon today on their YouTube channel and it's going crazy. They said tons of yeah. clicks. So definitely go check it out. Just uh, search for Guilford County Schools on YouTube and take a look at it. Yeah. Love seeing this kind of creativity. It's very cool. It's very cool. We're going to take a short break and uh, we're coming right back. See there. Chat with us on Facebook. Jay Eanes is cracking jokes. That's Leslie holding the camera. We need more jokes, her. Jay. We're talking jokes, food, everything. Hello, mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check. Mic check. I'm in the studio, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. Is that better? Oh, great, great. <laughs> what a time. <laughs> Sounds great. I need a. I need another okay. water break, Facebook. Gotta stay hydrated. It's getting warm. It's getting warm outside. Hydration is the key to success. <laughs> That's a Bobby Boucher quote, I do believe. That's an interesting pairing there, Matt. There are some parallels there. You You're not wrong. You need me to roll for you, or do you want one? I'm sure, okay. since cool. it's available. Another pretty dress. <laughs> Thanks, I love yours. Thanks. I'm back in the game, y'all. What happened? I had to give me some more water. Oh. Who saw Stephen LeBron last night? Goodness gracious. That was a that was a great game. No worries. No, you don't. Now it's getting hot out here. <laughs> uh, is that Eric's mic? Um, yeah. Well, that's me now, because I was checking to see if it was me. Yeah, I, he's out there with the wind, so I okay. think that's him.
Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs>Well, the Greensboro Grasshoppers on the road this week playing Hickory later this evening and the Hoppers have four guys on their team who could move to the majors uh, any day now. WFNY News 2's Amanda Ferguson introduces us to one of them. Tanaj Thomas is one of the top prospects for the Pittsburgh Pirates currently on the Hoppers roster. An opportunity he says he's grateful for. For me, it's been good. It's the right-handed pitcher Tanaj Thomas's first year playing for the Hoppers. Great group of locker room guys, great coaching staff. We had some success, but I feel like right now we're about to go on a run. So, but it's been pretty good so far. As for baseball, it's been a part of Thomas's life for about 15 years. I grew up playing baseball. My entire family played. My dad's side of the family is really big on baseball and like softball. Started playing when I was five in Freeport, Grand Bahama. That's where I'm from. The kid from the Bahamas. Now a top prospect for the Pirates. It's a great feeling. Just, it's a great feeling just knowing from where I came from and what I had to do to get here. And obviously there's a lot of work to be done and just got to keep going. But it's a great feeling to be a top prospect in this organization. Whether Thomas gets called up to the big show or stays on the Hoppers roster. My main goal for my career is just to try to help what organization I come in in the big leagues to win a championship. So that's my main goal. I just have to be in the moment, just have to stay present, just um, control what I can control here. To just have fun with my teammates, just stay locked in with my teammates, do as much as I can to possibly help us win and just let it go from there. That's how you make it far. All you have to do is just keep doing what you're doing and that's all he wants to do is win for the hoppers yeah another humble player that you introduced us to this week uh, i hope he goes very far and i'm excited to see what he's about to do i wish we had some video of the day when and if that comes that he gets called up wouldn't it be great to be yeah. there with oh, his yes. cell phone and just experience that with him i you work your whole life you know growing up to to get to that level and to get that call it's pretty huge and can you imagine coming from a country and you know, at least uh, he's fortunate enough that he does speak English very well. So it's, you know, not as difficult of a transition, but still being so young, coming to another country and having to make your own way and try to uh, fulfill your dream. It's just a great story and good luck to you. Yeah, and we'll see him here next week. The Hoppers are, like you said, Lauren, they're on the road this week, but they come back next Tuesday and they're here for six straight days. So we'll see him. Hopefully, hopefully that doesn't get called up just yet so we can <laughs> see him play again. Absolutely. Love to make it out before he uh, heads to Pittsburgh. He can make it through the homestand. That's, what, that's all we want, <laughs> just so we get a chance to see him. All right, we're going to talk about a forecast and uh, see what's going on with that. Yes, it is hot. Will it continue to be hot? Um, yes, it will. It's going to stay that way for a while. Uh, we're going to see temperatures in the mostly upper 80s for our seven day forecast. I'll say mid to upper 80s because tomorrow we go to 84. Uh, and we're kind of locked in right now at about 82. Hadn't changed very much in the last hour. So that may be within a degree or so of what our high will go on record as for today. And then when you look back uh, down east, you've got 87 toward Fayetteville in the Raleigh area, 83 coastside, a little bit cooler with the sea breeze down there. Uh, Myrtle Beach. Grand Strand showing up at 79, Boone's at 73, very comfortable there. Now, satellite and radar combination, not a whole lot happening. There is a dome of high pressure, a ridge of it that's right over the top of us, not going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, if anything, it becomes more centrally located over the Carolinas for tomorrow and really into Saturday as well. Now, you may look at our seven day in a minute and you say, wait a minute, usually when we're in the 80s, we all every day, it's like a 30 or 40% chance of late day pop up storms. Usually that is the case, but when the high pressure is right over the top of you, it doesn't allow that lift to really happen to give you those showers or thunderstorms. So for that reason, that's why you see these temperatures. I mean, this weekend, 88 and 89, but not really talking about a rain chance. We don't see a rain chance until the beginning of next week. That would be a Monday, Tuesday, very slight chance at 20% for those two days. High temperatures at 89 on Sunday and Monday, and basically that means we will see a stray 90 or 91 somewhere, especially in the southern Piedmont. By the time you get to uh, Wednesday and Thursday, 
we're still really warm. I mean, that 88 and 89 degrees. The only difference really in this forecast, we're mostly sunny through your weekend. We add a few clouds to the mix and you're looking at basically partly cloudy skies for that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, but overall, the forecast is kind of holding with what it is for a long time. Remember, we are still what are we, a couple weeks out from hurricane season, but that is something that we'll be watching as well. That technically starts June 1st, but just remember, because we've seen this in years past, hurricanes can develop any time, all the time, really. So we'll be watching for that. Uh, overnight lows, as we mentioned, in the upper 50s for tonight, but look at how warm they get. There's a chance by the beginning of next week that your morning temperatures, when you step out with lots of humidity, will probably be in those upper 60s, close to 70 degrees for overnight lows by next week. We'll keep you posted on all that.